Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am giving you my guide to camping at a music festival when you are traveling from out of state. For those that don't know me, my name is Aid. I'm a music festival content creator and I have camped at music festivals before and it can be a little bit challenging as to figuring out what to pack, what to bring, the logistics of everything, especially if you are coming from out of state. And so in today's video, I put together some of my tips, how I plan for it, how I have my own process for it and everything like that in hopes to help you plan for some of the camping festivals that you have for this year. If you do enjoy today's video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe subscribe button to vibe with me and without further ado let's get into it I do have an ultimate guide to camping at a music festival I believe I did it in 2019 or 20 or early 2020 I can't remember exactly but I will link it up here as well as down below for you guys that also has some info for you I did also camp at electric forest Coachella and dirty bird camp out and I believe I have content for electric forest and dirty bird camp out that I will link down below for you guys I have packing videos and you know touring the campsite and everything like that just so you guys can get a feel for what it's like. I haven't camped at a music festival yet this year so I'm a little bit rusty. I feel like once I do camp for the first time again since the pandemic I feel like I will have more tips for you guys so definitely stay tuned for that. I will be camping at EDC so that will be a little bit different of an experience since that comes with a tent so I'll, I'm excited to report back on that experience. In today's video I'm just going to be covering everything from how to prepare, things to think about when you're preparing, for it, how to pack, what to pack, and then some other general tips and things to think about. So kicking us off, how to prepare to going to a camping festival. First thing you got to do is secure your camping passes. So it's always important to check out the website and make sure that you have an understanding of what passes you need to secure. Sometimes with these festivals, for example, Electric Forest, they put the camping wristband and the festival wristband packaged into one. So if you purchase a general admission ticket, that is your ticket to camping and the festival. Other festivals, like Dirty Bird Campout, you might purchase a ticket separately to camping. Same thing with Coachella, you will purchase your passes separately. Another thing that you might need to also double check is if it is one cost for the entire group or if it's split up and you have to secure your own pass that way. So every festival is different, so it really just is important to look at the different options you have and make sure you read that fine print so you know exactly what you're getting charged and what you need to get beforehand. There's also various different types of camping. So for example, there is car camping, tent only camping, RV camping, and sometimes even some glamping options, which are pre-set up tents and stuff like that. You can kind of figure out what's going to work best for you. If you are going out of state and you are driving to that festival, then maybe car camping is a best option for you. If you are flying to this festival, then you can either rent a car and do car camping or rent an RV and do RV camping, or there's tent only options. So you could go into that specific area area and pitch your tent and that's your home for the weekend. And then like I said, there are more of those glamping pre-set up tent options. I did a pre-set up tent for Dirty Bird Campout. So all we had to do was go on a shuttle that left from the airport and took us to the campgrounds and then we got to our pre-set up tent. So that's just kind of some examples of the different camping passes that will be available. You can pick whatever works best for you. I also know at some of these other festivals, they do have the more luxurious and set up tents as well. So definitely go through, see what works best for your budget. When I can, I personally love car camping just because you can leave your items in the car, keep them secured away and everything like that while you are away at the festival. So that is typically what I prefer. And just to clarify on car camping, that means when you have a car and then an area next to it. So we don't sleep in the car, we sleep in the tent in the area that you can pitch next to it. Also with car camping, that's typically one pass you have to buy that you'll then split up between the people in your car. So just make sure you read the fine print and all of that, whether that that one price is included. I know for electric forest, you typically have to get a early arrival pass, but not necessarily a car camping pass. But like for Coachella, you need a car camping pass. Another thing to check out on the website is how big that area is. So sometimes a lot of people purchase multiple car passes. That way they could have a huge kind of setup for their tent area and they can have multiple car spaces taken up. I know for Coachella, we're gonna have a big area for all of us because we have multiple car camping passes. So that is something that kind of is a plus to car camping. You get a lot more space with that and just a lot more room and comfortability and stuff. And if you have multiple cars in your caravan, you guys will all need to arrive together in order 
to secure those spots together. Sorry, I missed some of these important things. <laughs> Once you secure your camp passes, then you can decide how you're going to get to the campground. So for example, if you're going to rent a car, that's pretty straightforward. Renting a car and then being able to get to the campgrounds is pretty smooth. If you cannot afford to rent a car or you're not of age to rent a car or it's too expensive, if you are underage, there sometimes are shuttles available from airports to the campgrounds. I know Electric Forest has a shuttle, Dirty Bird Campout has a shuttle, Coachella has a shuttle. I'm not sure of some of the other ones, but that could be a really great way to ensure that you have a ride to and from the airport. So that's just another thing that you can check up on on the website. Otherwise, you might have to resort to like a ride share or a taxi to get you to the campgrounds. I know for EDC Las Vegas, we are most likely going to Uber from the Strip to the campgrounds, I believe, just because we don't want to rent a car. Since it's all tent only camping and RV camping, it, there really isn't a point for us to rent a car just for a couple days just for it to sit there. So that is something that we're looking into. And I do believe that they might have shuttles for EDC, but I'm not too sure when it comes to like taking you from the airport to the campground. So that could be something to look into. One last thing for preparation is to check if they have early arrival. If you are coming from out of state, I highly recommend doing early arrival. It might be a pass that you have to pay a little extra to get there early, but I think it's so worth it just because if any travel delays happen or anything goes wrong, you don't have to stress about rushing to the festival. And so with early arrival, what that means is, say for example, Electric Forest was happening on Thursday. The first day is on that Thursday. Early arrival means you can start arriving on Wednesday. They even did an update to have early arrival start on Tuesday. And so you purchase that pass. It's usually good for one car for you to arrive early. You get to set up the tent, relax a little bit, and just kind of like reset before the festival starts. What I've heard from a lot of people, if you do the arrival on Thursday to Electric Forest and go straight to the festival, it can be super stressful because you arrive, you set up your tent, you get ready, and then you go to the festival. Whereas early arrival, it gives you more flexibility. It gives you peace of mind, gives you more ease to kind of ease into the festival. So I highly recommend to anyone to always do early arrival, even if you're not traveling from out of state, just to make sure that you're going to get to the festival and you don't have to rush from one thing to the next of like setting up your tent, getting ready, and then going to the festival. So definitely look to see if that's available. If early arrival is not available, then I definitely recommend checking out the hours that camping is open and be there right when it opens. It's going to be a long line to get in. So also make sure that you have a full tank of gas just in case the line is super long. Just get there early. That way you have a set spot. You're also closer to the gates of the festival most likely if you have a closer spot. It just will allow you to make sure that you get there on time and that you can ease into it. You don't have to rush setting everything up and you can get to the festival on time and don't feel like you're rushing or late or miss any of your favorite sets. Last thing to prep is just read that website. Make sure you're informed on everything of like what's allowed in, what's not allowed in, and then also about showers or other information that you need to know about camping. I also recommend checking out Reddit and Facebook groups because a lot of time there's a lot of good info for camping that you might not have known about. And so definitely do some of that research just to help you feel better about going into the festival. So what to bring to a camping music festival. I have this all in my guide that I will link down below in case you need a checklist. I've also covered it in some other videos, but of course you're gonna need some of those camping essentials. So some of the stuff that I make sure that I bring has to do with kind of the sleeping stuff. And so I do pack a tent. I'm able to fit a tent I got from Amazon. It's one of those Coleman tents. I will link it down below. Then I also make sure I can pack a sleeping bag. A sleeping pad is one of those things that you can blow up with air and be able to sleep on it. Small pillow, flashlight, speaker. Those are kind of the some of the main things I always make sure to pack reusable water bottles. I do have tapestries. I hold on to tapestries specifically for the camping festivals. And then, you know, from there, then you bring kind of like your festival items, what you need for the festival, clothes for camp, clothes for outside of the festival, and, you know, your festival clothing and stuff. Me again, check the weather beforehand as well. So sometimes at Electric Forest, it cools down at nighttime. So sometimes I pack one sweatshirt or a light jacket or a pair of leggings or something that I can go back to the campsite and change into or pack in my bag if I need to or if you're gonna need a rain jacket or something like that. So I forgot to touch on weather, but just check the weather beforehand. Every festival is different. 
Like even at Coachella, I normally don't pack a jacket for, but I do just pack one just in case you never know. And then toiletry, some of the main things, make sure you bring a towel and shower shoes and just like your toiletries and stuff for the shower. If you wanna bring cash, I recommend bringing cash for the showers just in case. Most of the time they might be card, but you just never know. Some items that I do want to invest in that I wanna be able to bring to camping festivals is reusable items for eating. So a lot of the times we purchase this stuff at Walmart and it just goes to waste. So I really wanna see if I can make an investment in some reusable cups, reusable plates, reusable silverware, stuff like that. And then, you know, you could use like a gallon water jug or something to wash it off, get some small dish soap that you can use just to clean it off and stuff, just because it's such a waste getting all of that plastic and it barely getting used. So that's something I wanna invest in. So that's kind of the stuff that I'm gonna be packing into my suitcases is, you know, having one suitcase for all of the camp stuff that I need and then having another suitcase for more of your regular festival style packing. From there, what I typically do is we do a pickup order at Walmart and we make a list of the things we need at Walmart just so we're not running into things being unavailable. When you do a pickup order at Walmart, it just ensures that you're able to pick it up and those items are there for you. So some of the things that we typically order is like an easy up, which after we donate to someone or we donate it um, to somewhere else. So that's something that we always try and do is get an easy up. That way we can have shade over our tents. Another thing we order is tarps. It's super helpful to have that to kind of go over the grass. We get trash bags and recycling bags just to make sure that we're divvying up the trash that we have. There are certain areas where you can go drop it off and they pick it up. Getting a cooler so that way we can keep ice and water and stuff like that. And some of the items that we don't use, we either donate to like our camping neighbors or sometimes the festivals have initiatives to where you can donate to them and they'll handle all the leftover stuff as well. What we have, we got some, we got three different tarps. We got two of these eight feet by 10 feet and then we got another six feet by eight feet somewhere. Food, we got a ball. We got these like mattress pads. So we already have like a mattress pad and then we're gonna put sleeping bag on top of it, but we're gonna put this under it in between it. Got pillows, got some spear knobs. Um, let's see, I got band-aid stuff, trash bags, plates. Another thing that I really don't prefer to bring when I'm at a camping music festival is all the cooking items, right? So some people, when they're driving, they have this full setup of like cookware, stoveware, like all this stuff. I don't necessarily do that for out-of-state festivals just because it'd be really hard to order than not use and it'd be really hard to bring. I stick to a lot of foods at the campsite that you don't need cooking for. So I mostly eat like bananas, PB&J, protein bars, trail mix, chips and salsa, stuff like that that won't go bad and that you're able to just kind of snack on. For me personally, I like to budget for one meal inside the festival and maybe one meal inside the campgrounds just because I'd rather just pay for a meal and not have to worry about filling up on random processed foods or snacks or anything like that. That's typically what I budget for because sometimes in the campgrounds they do have areas for like breakfast and lunch and dinner and stuff like that and it sometimes is really good so that's something Something that I always budget for is a big meal inside the festival and a meal beforehand. You know, I might eat snacks here and there. And so I try and just kind of minimize that and then just pick up some of those snacks at Walmart and drinks at Walmart and stuff like that too. Just wanted to touch on that because it's a little bit harder. I wish I could bring all the cookware and cooking stuff, but it's just easier to save money and get a really good meal beforehand from a vendor or just to have things to snack on here and there. So how to pack. So I've kind of hinted here and there about how I pack. I'll include some packing videos up here and down below for you guys. But my method is that I usually fly Southwest and if I don't, then I pay for the extra bags. But when you fly Southwest, you get two extra bags that you can have checked in basically. So I use one bag for the camping supplies and I'll usually split that with whoever I'm traveling with. We're able to put in like our towels and yoga mat, tapestries, tent, all of that stuff I can fit into one suitcase. And then in the other suitcase, if I'm able to split with someone then we also put all our festival clothes festival items everything like that definitely check out those videos to see my process and how I'm able to fit all of those things but I've never had any issues with that I know for electric forest I've had to fly southwest but then on the way back fly American that was something where I had to pay extra to check those bags but I didn't really mind it because I was able to bring all that stuff and we were able to use all of that so it was just one of those things to sacrifice but it's not too much of a price difference honestly and if you budget for that then you don't have to worry about it that's one way 
that you can go about packing and that's probably the one that I always stick with. For Camp ADC, I might be able to fit everything in one suitcase, one big suitcase. So we'll see about that. If not, maybe we'll pack like a small tiny suitcase for all the stuff we need for camp. We'll definitely play around with that and I'll have a packing video for you guys to check out on that. So wrapping up here, these are just some general camping tips. They're not necessarily have to do with like coming out of state, but just to kind of remind you guys and wrap this video up. Security can be different for everyone. It really just depends on the festival and also what kind of day the security is having. I've seen it to where security just waves us through, doesn't even check the car because the line's been so backed up and they're just trying to get people in. I've had more thorough car checks, but they're really just checking to make sure like weapons, no alcohol and glass and everything. So just make sure you check the rules on the website to make sure you're following by it. If they happen to sense anything, like if anyone in the car is being weird or sketchy or you guys have like random vapes or I don't even know. Sometimes it's so easy to tip off security and then they just check your whole car. So just be careful. Make sure you're following the guidelines. Be kind to the security people and you shouldn't have an issue. Right when you get there, once you get camp set up and everything, I definitely recommend to get familiar with the grounds. Know where your nearest bathroom is, where the general store is, where the main campground area is, just so you can get a lay of the land and also put a pin on your Apple phone maps or if you can do this on your Android phone, put a pin where your campsite is. That way you know where to find it late at night, just in case you never know. If you're able to put a pin where your campsite is, it'll definitely help you find it. Sometimes these festivals do have like street crossing signs or they have a festival map so you know that you're in camp blueberry or something like that that's like an electric forest camp i'm pretty sure so that way you know exactly where you're camping at and you don't have a hard time looking for your camp shower line so in my history of going to music festivals i've never had to wait in a long shower line what i typically do to avoid the long shower lines is i wait until the last possible second to me getting ready to go take a shower and what i mean by that is at Coachella specifically, everyone wakes up early thinking that they're going to beat the line and they go at 7 a.m. And so peak times is usually 7 to 9 a.m. I would say. And so what I would do is I would go at around 12 p.m., 1230, maybe even one, depending on what time we're going in. I would go get my shower then because by then everyone's already showered. And even when you shower early and you come back, you get ready for the day and you're just sitting at your campsite, you're going to start sweating again. So I I try and minimize that time between when I shower and when I go to the festival because I'm just going to sweat regardless. You know what I mean? So that's something to definitely check out, but you can always get a feel for it. I typically shower one or two times. Otherwise, I'm using baby wipes to kind of wash off at the end of the night just so I can feel a little bit more clean and then I'll go try and shower the next day. So it depends on how long the festival is. I'll either shower once or I'll shower twice. It really just depends. But that's my tip for avoiding those long shower lines is try and go at times that not a lot of people are going to also maybe pick a shower that's like furthest away because maybe a lot of people are more at some of those main central showers trying to get a shower the last thing is most festivals do have a general store so definitely see if there's a general store just in case you forget anything or need anything a lot of times these places also have ice sometimes they do drive around with ice so that's just something to know maybe bring cash for ice if you need it for your cooler and then yeah the general store is just great because they have extra supplies and stuff in case you forgot something. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope this video was helpful if you are attending a camping music festival from out of state. Hopefully this video helps. Like I said, I haven't been able to go to a camping festival since COVID, so I'm not quite sure if there's any other tips just yet, but if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, I will definitely report back on some of the camping festivals I do attend this year and next year. If you did like today's video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to vibe with me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.